breaking news. Breaking news. Hedy Slimane exit Celine. Under the designer's tenure, the LVMH-owned house became a mega brand with new categories including menswear and beauty. Hedy Slimane has exited Celine. This has been rumoured for a while. I feel like these rumours started maybe like a year ago. Maybe a year ago. Maybe the top of this year. Maybe the end of this year. But I feel like it was rumoured that Hedy Slimane will be leaving Celine for a very long time. Now, I don't think it's anything to do with money. I don't think it's anything to do with money because if I'm not mistaken, I remember I saw a report one time where allegedly during Hedy Slimane's tenure, um, Celine was making like 2.5 billion. And before he joined, they were making half a billion. So he definitely has increased um, their turnover and profits and shit. And, you know, in terms of what they put out clothing-wise, most of it you don't see on runways because he doesn't take part in the regular fucking fashion weeks and shit. He mostly does these really cool, what I would imagine very expensive and labor-inducive um, sort of like uh, shows around the world. Mostly, I guess, mostly like France, I think, in these really, really um, amazing, luxurious country estates and stuff and houses. Um, they film them from multiple angles with drones and very high value, high level production cameras and shit. But they're mostly always on video. I'm pretty sure most of these collection runway stuff is on video. You can't even see that stuff on Vogue Runway. But from what I remember seeing, a lot of the stuff was fucking fire. It's a particular sort of vibe, you know, Hedy Sabane, you know what he's into, that sort of like what, what you deem it to be like 70s, 80s rock, indie rock sort of like flavor that he does, similar to what he did before at Saint Laurent, similar to what he did before at fucking, um, what's it fucking called? Um, ah, it, it fucking escapes my head at the moment, but he's been doing that particular look at loads of fucking houses, but he just kind of, you know, tweaks it a little bit based on what sort of house he's in. But I personally think the stuff he's done at Celine has been really good, especially the women's. Even though I prefer him, obviously, for men's stuff, I would wear, I think the women's the women's line at Celine under his tenure has been very fucking strong. So many great accessories, footwear, jackets I really fucking liked. Styling is just always tip-top. I don't know who styles his shows. Maybe he does it all himself. But the styling is always fucking amazing. And it's just going from strength to strength. And that's, again, that's without it being, like, super in your face with the marketing. That's without it being super in your face with the influencers. Even though, no, sorry, that, take it back. They do, they do have a lot of influencers out there. But if I remember correctly, they were very, very young. Sort of like, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even under 25 TikTok influencers and shit. And obviously a lot of guys and girls from the K-pop world of things wearing their stuff. But this is without them doing the conventional marketing influencer, you know, stuff that most brands do. They were still fucking killing it, still making a bunch of money, um, not taking part in the regular fashion weeks and still fucking killing it. So this, to me, if I had to say why he left Celine, because if I'm not mistaken, this is the end of his six year contract. So they didn't renew it. So I think negotiations were happening. But from the onset, it seems like there was some sort of conflict, some sort of debate, some sort of argument within that renew, re, you know, renewal period. So knowing how fashion works, knowing how fashion is a business, most likely I would say the reason why they haven't renewed his contract is because he's a pain in the ass to work with. I think so. I think he's a pain in the ass to work with. I think this thing that he does where he wants his studio to be where he lives. If I'm not mistaken, the Atelier or the main design studio is probably in LA where he lives. Um, he hosts these shows off off schedule in these really crazy places that probably cost a bunch of money. He probably runs a really tight ship. He probably, you know, exacts too much control over the brand. I remember there was a big deal about when he dropped the hyphen. Remember when he dropped the fucking hyphen? on the E on Celine and shit. So I think there's a lot of, or the accent, sorry. I think a lot of that stuff probably played a role into him um, not re-signing. I think just him as a person. I don't think him as a designer and what he probably added to the brand is why they decided to let him go or not renew. I think most likely they said, you know what? You are too much of a ball leg to deal with. We can't deal with this anymore. We can't do another six years of this tyranny. Most likely there's probably a bunch of HR. Of, I probably, if I had glass door now, I don't want to open that because Glassdoor is a is an absolute cancer of a website. But if I could access Glassdoor right now, I bet you there are some not favorable reviews of Glassdoor on Celine by the past employees. I'm pretty sure. And most likely it's all coming from working under Hedy Semaine or that kind of organization that he's probably set up. So I'm assuming even though you get great stuff, even though he increases sales, even though he's a fucking one of the, you know, elite designers out there at the moment, 
what you will get as well during his tenure is a lot of uh, broken hearts, a lot of miserable people working there because it seems like Henry Semaine likes to work a particular way and he likes it his way or the highway. Obviously, if you want to make money, you do it his way, but long-term, it's not really good for worker satisfaction. So I think most likely they let go of him because he's a pain in the ass to work with. I would guess. Anyway, let's read the article courtesy of Vogue Business. It says, after a seven-year run, Hedy Semaine is leaving Celine. Under his creative and artistic direction, Celine has experienced exceptional growth, established herself as an iconic French couture house, Celine said in a statement on Wednesday. The extraordinary journey taken together over the last seven years has made Celine a house of formidable foundation for the future. No name of successor has been announced. So more than likely, more than likely, what I said was true. More than likely, he's a pain now to deal with and they said, you know what, we can't do this anymore sayonara which is probably why they haven't announced a successor because they were probably trying to work it out but then towards the end you know what we can't do this which is probably why it was floated out there that you know he might be replaced he might go somewhere else because he probably wasn't getting what he was getting out most likely that news of him not staying at Celine was probably coming from Hedy Semaine's side Hedy Semaine's side of people his PR probably leaked that news hey he doesn't want to stay probably pointing out the feelers pointing out the fucking signals pointing out the smoke signals for other brands and other houses uh, Slimane um, became artistic, creative, and image director of Celine already. Look at all these titles that he has under 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 Celine. Imagine the Bolick getting that rat ratified, right? Getting that fucking penciled in. Artistic, creative, and image director of Celine in February 2018 after Phoebe Philo's ex departure, which is a real, real deviation, isn't it? Imagine going from Phoebe Philo to to fucking um, Hedy Slimane. That's an incredible fucking pivot. Very, very different. Which probably also explains why Phoebe Philo is struggling, if you think about it. Phoebe Philo left in 2018, or let's say before that, 2017. She then took an extended break. So then all those customers that were at Phoebe Philo, the, all those customers that were at Phoebe Philo's Celine, they had to go somewhere else. So they found other brands like the Row and whatever else. So then when Phoebe Philo came back with a namesake brand, there were no customers to kind of like come back to her brand. Not, to, not at the same level, because in the time that she was away, they all found other brands, not just Celine, because obviously it's a completely different, you know, artistic vision completely. So I might explain partly why she's struggling. Maybe that partly explains it. I could be wrong. Let's continue. He was previously artistic director um, of menswear Yves Saint Laurent until 2000, when he joined Dior Homme. This is where he created a skin the skinny silhouette that famously prompted Karl Lagerfeld to go on a diet. Semaine left Dior in 2007 and returned to Yves Saint Laurent in 2012 as creative director where he cut Yves from the Saint Laurent name immediately before his first show. He left in 2016. Let's give the guy some credit. Cutting the Yves from Saint Laurent was a genius move. Especially when you remember how much of a genius Yves Saint Laurent, Yves Saint Laurent was when he was alive. I think cutting that Yves from his, the name of it allowed other designers to come under and do their own thing while still honoring the legacy of Yves. Do you know what I mean? That was a genius move. At the time he did it, everyone was obviously spitting blood. But now we look back at it, that was a fucking genius move. Now, anyone that comes behind, who's the guy there now? Um, Anthony Vicarella, or however you fucking pronounce his name. Everyone's going to give give given a chance. You, you you won't feel as much of a weight working under that house than if you did before when it's just the name, full name on it. That was actually a genius move. I still say his best work even more so than Dior Homme, even though a lot of the Dior Homme, Hedy Slimane stuff is still, there's still some legendary pieces till this day people are collecting. I think back to like, one of the best things that I remember Hedy Slimane creating for Dior Homme back then was those, if I'm not mistaken, they were like silver, they were like silver sequin skinny jeans. <sighs> Yo, like those, I still think about those pants to this day. That's one of my grail grails. They were like sequin all over. Like fucking delightful, fucking beautiful. But I still think um Hedy Semaine at Saint Laurent was probably the best he's ever done. The best he's ever done. Hedy Semaine at Saint Laurent, the best work he's ever done. That was his Magnus Opus. The stuff there from the fucking Wyatt boots to the fucking um what you call it? From the fucking motorbike pants, from the plaid jackets, um, from the leather jackets, from the fucking teddy jacket, teddy varsity jackets, like all of it is just top fucking notch, man. Some, all that stuff is aged so great, so well. And most of that collection, if I'm not mistaken, was a genesis of starting loads of brands. You wouldn't have got Fear of God if it weren't for Saint Laurent. If it wasn't for Hedy Saint Laurent. Probably you wouldn't have had to represent. You probably wouldn't have Cole Buxton. 
you probably won't have all these fucking shitty brands now if you didn't have fucking Heady at fucking Saint Laurent. He birthed a lot of this fucking that aesthetic. He birthed it completely. So big up Heady, man. Um, as Celine, he dropped the accent over the E in Celine and introduced a new logo before his first show. His debut show in spring 2019, where he added menswear, received a raucous chorus of, of criticism. Wrote the Paris, um, sorry, Washington Post, Robin Gavin, Robin Gibbon, sorry. In a single evening, he has blown up everything that Selena was flushed it clean. His name might not be on the label, but in every respect, the brand might as well be called Heady Slimane. Given wrote for Autumn Winter 19, he shifted to a bourgeoisie French girl look. This time, it was a near, um, what you call it, unanimous we. Oui. So I, I think a lot of houses like this, though. You know what? I think a lot of houses like this, similar to like football managers at clubs. I think football, I think football owners at clubs or football directors, when they hire managers, oh no, yeah, football directors, when they hire managers, I think they want them to do their own thing. Like, even if, even if a football director's like, hey, we want our team to be possession-based, and they hire a possession-based manager, they want you to do possession your way. They don't want you to come in and do it a particular, you know, route one football, but they want you to do your version of possession-based football. Same goes for fashion. I think when these big fashion houses hire these, manage these fucking designers, they don't want you to just, like, you know, take the codes and just sort of like do it in your own voice. They want you to do your voice under the brand. Like, because they're bringing you in for some of your cool factor. They're bringing you in because some of your, with some of your starter, some of your pull, some of your cultural relevance. And then they want you to say, hey, okay, cool. Let me now design what I'm going to design under your label. Obviously take some things from the code, take some things from the archive, but essentially present what I want to present unapologetically under. And I think that bravery is what top designers do. Really high level designers, that's what they do. They come in like, you know what? I'm going to let my nuts hang. I know you have an extensive archive. But I want to create my own history. I want to do my things my way. Bang. And it's also way less, it's cost effective too, right? Because if you're a designer, why take the risk of setting up your own label when you can just work for somebody else, get a salary while also technically doing your own label? Exactly. It continues. At LVMH annual earnings conference in 2018, Soon after the announcement, Samain's appointment, LVMH chairman and CEO Bernard Arnault said the objective with him is to reach at least $2 billion to $3 billion and perhaps more within five years. At the time, Celine's sales were close to $1 billion. Five years later, sales reached an estimated 2.6 in 2023. So he was just short. So maybe that's the reason why. Maybe part of the reason why he got let go or they didn't renew his contract because he fell just short of the $3 billion target. Because he did two point six billion, but I think in general, again, given that how, given how um, press shy or press avoidant Hedy Samain is, given that they don't do their shows traditionally during the regular Paris Fashion Weeks and shit, given that they don't invite people to view the show and it's all fucking YouTube videos and shit, and how that works and blah blah, and having a stranglehold on sales and blah 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 blah, still to be able to do two point six billion is a fucking good look, um, and if only just reduced beauty. They've only just introduced beauty as well, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not even like he was making most of that money through the sale of like beauty and shit. They've only just introduced it, I think, this year or maybe last year. So all of that was coming from ready to wear. Wow. God damn. Making LVMH's third fashion brand, third largest fashion brand, sorry, after Louis Vuitton and Dior overtaking Fendi in terms of revenue. Samain oversaw the introduction of Celine's fragrances in 2019 and makeup initially in the form of lipstick line that's that slated to follow in the autumn. So yeah, Beauty only is introduced this autumn. Jesus Christ. Um, having shielded, having shielded, oh, sorry, having shied away from the press from the start of his company, Samain more or less stopped doing live runway shows after the pandemic, even after other designers of LVMH stable resumed regular shows, although he receded from public view. His, out, his amalgam of, of Parisian hood bourgeoisie and Los Angeles rock glamour remained persuasive vision. I imagine, bro. He doesn't even live in Paris, I don't think. I swear to God, he lives in LA. Um, because I'm, I'm sure I've read reports of him like attending like random indie shows to go and do his casting and shit to find like hot skinny guys and girls for his shows and whatnot and to hang out with him. No, again, word, quiet is kept. Quiet is kept. I'm actually surprised no funny business has come out about Hedy Samain. Maybe, maybe he's well behaved, but not to put any smart in his name because he's, again, he's one of my idols and i fucking love him the same way i love hiroshi rick owens jun takahashi and shit but i'm actually surprised there hasn't been any rumors or news of heli samane being a bit of a creep because he loves hanging out with young kids like he's always about like he's actually he actually might be a really good a and r he actually knows he's plugged in plugged in 
He knows all the big popping bands that are happening, that are bubbling on the sur under the surface. He goes to a lot of these indie shows, synth pop shows, hardcore shows. Like he's there, he's in the field. So I wonder if that's just him just being a fan of youth culture and just hanging around, or if he's actually there to like you know pick up some boys. It continues. In December 2022, Samain chose Los Angeles, a city where he lived and worked as St. Laurent's creative director for his first physical runway show since the pandemic titled Age of Indie Mess. So, Indiness. If Samain is ever going to stop at, step out of his opinions brand, his nostalgic collection would surely be the basis, wrote Vogue's Christine Binkley. Still standing free from the fashion calendar in early September, he unveiled his spring 2025 collection in the format of a 13-minute film they directed called The Bright Young. This past weekend, during past Fashion Week, he also released a spring 2025 film titled En, en Un Et Francais. Un Et Francais. The designer sent out a tweed-heavy collection um, prompting commentators to believe he's leaving Chanel, which is yet to appoint a new designer. So... This is interesting because now I'm finding out actually I was wrong. He does show his shows during the fashion weeks. He just doesn't show runway shows. So they just always release as films on YouTube and shit or live stream on his Instagram account, which is still kind of the same thing I said, but just to clarify that he does actually still present during fashion weeks, just not with normal shows that you could be invited to. They're usually in these like amazing, like literally amazing crazy houses i don't know whose house who who owns these homes or these fucking palaces and shit but they are fucking beautiful if you watch them on youtube honestly i recommend you do celine continues to make strong progress said i know during the lvmh annual meeting in april celine is chic hip sexy fashion for young people even if the prices are what they are and then it works I was in Japan last week with Delphine Arno, and I could see what in, I could see that in front of the Celine boutiques, there was an incredible line up to two hours. Where where will Celine land in his next act? Fashion we're watching closely. So people are assuming he's gonna go to Chanel. People are assuming that, but you know the world is his oyster. Really, he can kind of write his own ticket. Even though he's a bit of a nightmare to work with, clearly even though he might be a bit of an arsehole behind the scenes, the work speaks for itself. And I think nowadays, given the dearth, given the lack of talent that can actually make money, I think a lot of these brands, some of these houses would want, would love nothing more than have Harry Semaine, you know, under um, their fucking house, you know, steering the ship and shit. They'd fucking love it. Obviously, they wouldn't love the control he would exert and shit and the terms that he would try to negotiate for. But... When it comes to making money, the bottom line, he's the guy. He's actually the guy. But I'm curious, actually, if he doesn't go to Chanel, would he try and do what Phoebe Philo's done and, and do his own namesake label? Will that be an option? Because if he does his own namesake label, he could legitimately move to the beat of his own drum and do everything the way he wants to do it. Whether it's dropping one collection per year, one collection, you know, two collections per year, three, four, whatever. He could do it any time, off calendar, off season, whatever. He could decide how he fucking presents it, is it done in the form of zines, videos, long form things, whatever? Who fucking knows? I'd actually love to see that. I'm not going to lie. I would actually love to see Hedy Semaine, namesake label. Like, imagine having a fucking a leather biker jacket with a label that says Hedy Semaine in this really crazy, amazing font that's been fucking designed by Johnny Ive or something. I'd fucking love to see that if that's possible. But let's see how it plays out. Big up Hedy Semaine. Big up Blood Clark Hedy Semaine. Continuing on.